Today we're having a look at a new component in Struct Scripts, part of the conversion series, and this one's eTabs to Grasshopper. So here I've got a reference to an eTabs file. I'll just read that file and feed it into this component, and it will give me the 3D geometry rendered as a model. There it is. All the steel sections are modeled in 3D with labels. Pretty easy. Here's a screenshot of the original eTabs model. And if I do one with concrete, you can see it's not just steel, it's concrete, slabs, walls, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so from the Struct Scripts toolbar, I'm just going to grab the eTabs to Grasshopper component in the conversion section. Drop that in to the workspace. You got three inputs there. The most important one is the E2K text input for an eTabs file. So this just takes text. So to get text from a file into Grasshopper, you just need the read file component. So if I just type file, it's found the read file component. Now it needs a file name, so you can either use a path or you can just right click and select one file. So here I've got a series of eTabs file files in uh, E2K format and to get an eTabs in E2K you have to do this file export and go to the eTabs e E2K text file export option within eTabs. So I'm just going to select one of these eTabs files you can see that it's outputting some text so I'm just going to add that to the component and you can see it's outputting some curves some sections and there's no areas or flat surfaces um, like slabs or walls in this particular file so I can just show that with curves you can see the curves come up as a very simple file just for example I'll show a complex one in a second. But further to that, you can also use an additional uh, struct scripts tool, which is the basic modeler out of the base component. So if I just drop the modeler in, you can see member curve C. If I just join C to C there, you can see it's modeling all those as a steel section. And we also know the sizes, so I'm going to join that, the D component up. Anything it doesn't recognize, it will default um, to a basic steel section, but you can see, you can already tell that some sizes have come from the eTabs file and it's putting them in as the correct size. And obviously, we can tag oops, tag, 3D tag tool, LTS, LTS, and you can see the sizes written there on the model. So let's, let's take some other eTabs files. I've got some ready here already, and these are just the file path component where I've already selected particular file. So all we need to do is to put that file name in, wait for a couple of seconds, and then we've got another eTabs model straight into Grasshopper, all 3D modeled and ready to go. You can see all the sizes notated there. 
So now I'm going to pull in another one. And this is the same file, but it's been modeled in eTabs as a concrete structure with some steel up the top level. You can see there, so you've got your concrete beams, concrete columns, and the top level steel. So you can mix, mix and match. This one also has um, the missing parts are because they're concrete walls. So if we go back to the eTabs to Grasshopper component, you can see A now has some surfaces. So if I just type in surface, connect that, you can see that the concrete wall elements and concrete slabs have come in from directly from the eTabs file as well. Okay, I'll just quickly do a couple more examples so you can see. It can convert some pretty big files quite easily. It takes a couple of seconds. So that one's got quite a bit of stuff happening. Some weird sizing on this. I think that's to do with the eTabs file being a bit messed up inside the eTabs program. And finally, a quite big file. So you can see they're taking about five seconds, which isn't too bad for such a big file. These are the big ones. There you go. So that's got 659 beams. 65 slabs and it's all modeled and labeled and ready to go thanks for watching this structured parametrics video leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one